Tensions between Austria-Hungary and Serbia escalated following the May overthrow in 1903. The new Karadordevic government aligned itself with the Russian Empire, shifting away from its previous allegiance to the Habsburgs. Austria-Hungary's annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina in 1908 further strained relations, leading to calls for war from the Serbian public. However, with no assurance of Russian support, Serbia refrained from military action. In June 1914, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand by Bosnian Serb Gavrilo Princip in Sarajevo triggered the July crisis. Austria-Hungary issued an ultimatum to Serbia, which was intentionally made unacceptable and subsequently rejected. This led to Austria-Hungary declaring war on Serbia on July 28, 1914, marking the beginning of World War I. The first Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia commenced in early August 1914. Despite the Austro-Hungarian forces being smaller than initially planned due to deployments on the Russian front, they still outnumbered the Serbian army. However, the Serbian forces, though fewer in number, were experienced veterans from the Balkan Wars and highly motivated. The Serbs faced challenges such as shortages of weaponry and supplies but compensated with their determination and military skill. General Oskar Podiorek led the Austro-Hungarian forces, while Crown Prince Alexander and Field Marshal Radomir Putnik commanded the Serbian army. Despite Podiorek's confidence in an easy victory, the Serbian forces, under skilled leadership, proved resilient and determined to defend their homeland. In the lead-up to the conflict, mobilized Austro-Hungarian troops were dispatched from Sarajevo toward Serbia. From July 29 to August 11, the Austro-Hungarian army initiated a series of artillery assaults in northern and northwestern Serbia. They capitalized on these bombardments by constructing pontoon bridges across the Sava and Dina rivers. Aware of the impossibility of defending the extensive Austro-Serbian border, Serbian General Putnik reorganized his forces to fall back on a traditional defensive line in Samadija. The majority of Serbian forces were concentrated in this region, poised to swiftly respond to threats from the north or west. Additionally, strategic towns like Valjevo and Uzus were heavily fortified, with outposts established at key frontier points. Throughout this period, Belgrade, Smederevo, and Veliko Gradist endured relentless artillery attacks, while Austro-Hungarian attempts to cross the Danube met with significant losses. Recognizing these feints, the Serbian general staff remained vigilant. However, more substantial attacks occurred as Austro-Hungarian forces tried to cross the Dina at Ljubovija and the Sava at Sabak. On August 12, Austro-Hungarian troops successfully entered Serbia through Loznica and Lesnica, with the 13th Army Corps crossing the Dina and the 4th Army Corps crossing the Sava. Sabak fell swiftly to Austro-Hungarian forces. By August 14, spanning approximately 100 miles, Austro-Hungarian troops had crossed the rivers and converged on Valjevo. Meanwhile, the Austro-Hungarian 2nd and 5th Armies advanced towards Belgrade, where they encountered Serbian opposition from the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Armies. Responding to these developments, on August 15, General Putnik ordered a Serbian counterattack. Between August 15 and 20, the Serbian forces engaged in intense combat with the invading Austro-Hungarian army. On August 15, elements of the Serbian 1st Combined Division confronted Austro-Hungarian outposts on Ser Mountain, initiating fierce fighting that continued into the night. By the morning of August 16, the Serbs had successfully seized strategic positions, including the Devaka Range and the village of Barino Selo, forcing the Austro-Hungarians to retreat with heavy casualties. Subsequent Serbian actions prevented the 21st Infantry Division from joining forces with the 2nd Army in Sabak. On August 17, Serbian attempts to retake Sabak were unsuccessful, while the 1st Combined Division pressed on towards Kosan and Grad. Meanwhile, the Austro-Hungarians repelled the Serbian 3rd Army, necessitating the deployment of additional Serbian divisions to protect Valjevo from the 42nd Mountain Division. In the early hours of August 18, the Austro-Hungarians launched another offensive aimed at dislodging the 1st Samadija Division from the Sabak bridgehead. However, the Serbs successfully repelled this attack at the Dubrava River. Simultaneously, the Serbian 2nd Army's counteroffensive continued along the Ser and Ivrak, resulting in the recapture of Razalajaka and Kosan and Grad. By August 19, the Serbs had achieved significant victories, driving the Austro-Hungarians back from several key positions. The Austro-Hungarian 4th Corps failed to break the Serb defenses, preventing it from altering its advance towards Ser Mountain. The Serbian momentum continued on August 20, with further advances and successful engagements against the retreating Austro-Hungarian forces. 
By this point, Austro-Hungarian troops were fleeing across the Dina River into Bosnia, pursued relentlessly by the Serbs. The town of Sabak was encircled, leading to its eventual capture by Serbian forces on August 24. The decisive victory at Ser Mountain marked the end of the first Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia, with the Serbs effectively repelling the enemy forces and reclaiming lost territory. Both the Austro-Hungarian and Serbian forces suffered significant casualties during the battles. Estimates vary, with Jordan stating that the Austro-Hungarians suffered around 37,000 casualties, including 7,000 fatalities. Misha Glenny suggests that nearly 30,000 Austro-Hungarian soldiers were wounded, with 6,000 to 10,000 killed. Horn reports 8,000 Austro-Hungarian fatalities and 30,000 wounded, along with the loss of numerous weapons and ammunition. Serbian casualties are also subject to varying estimates. Horn and Jordan agree on approximately 3,000 Serbian soldiers killed and 15,000 wounded. Glenny suggests a range of 3,000 to 5,000 Serb fatalities. The high number of casualties on both sides underscored the devastating human toll of the First World War. Atrocities were committed by both the Austro-Hungarians and Serbs, though the majority were attributed to the former. Austro-Hungarian troops accused Serb civilians of mutilating soldiers, while undisciplined soldiers executed hundreds of Serb men and committed acts of rape and murder against women and children. Some of the victims were fellow South Slavs serving in the Austro-Hungarian army. Serbian commanders documented numerous reprisal killings by the Austro-Hungarians, describing horrific scenes of mass murder and mutilation inflicted upon civilians. The atrocities perpetrated during the battle left a lasting impact on the region, with reports of mass graves and widespread devastation. The Serbs expended a significant amount of ammunition during the battle, requiring 6.5 million cartridges and 35,000 shells to emerge victorious. General Stipa Stepanovic, commander of the Serbian Second Army, was promoted to the rank of field marshal for his successful leadership. Conversely, Austro-Hungarian commander Oskar Podiorek suffered humiliation in defeat and sought to launch a second invasion of Serbia. However, he was cautioned to avoid further failures. The defeat at Ser Mountain also dampened the morale of Austro-Hungarian troops. The battle witnessed the first aerial dogfight of the war, involving Serbian aviator Majadrag Tomic and an Austro-Hungarian plane. Tomic's encounter led to the eventual installation of machine guns on all Serbian and Austro-Hungarian aircraft. Ser Mountain marked the first Allied victory over the Central Powers in World War I, garnering global attention for Serbia and earning sympathy from neutral and allied nations. Foreign support, including financial, political, humanitarian, and military aid, flowed into Serbia following the triumph. The British press increasingly published articles in defense of Serbia, while certain circles in Italy advocated joining the Allies, citing Serbian and Montenegrin successes. To commemorate the victory, Serbian composer Stanislav Biniki composed the patriotic song A March on the Dina, dedicated to Colonel Milivoj Stojanovic, who perished in the battle. Additionally, a Yugoslav war film titled A March on the Dina, released in 1964, loosely depicted the events of the battle. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.